It's not an upgrade. It's a breakthrough. Hmm. I kind of have to agree with Apple on this one. It's time to save up again. Hey everyone, welcome back to AP Studio. Apple's M1 chip just came out and the whole tech and creative community is talking about it. And I am super excited about it as well. So what do I care most about a chip? It comes down to two things. Performance and power efficiency. And Apple is making a bold claim in both departments. For starters, Apple is claiming 3.5 times performance over the previous model. If you look into the footnote on their website, you can see that Apple compared the new MacBook Air with M1 to the previous Intel i7 MacBook Air. It is interesting to see that they base this 3.5 times performance over the time needed to transcode a 4K ProRes video in Final Cut Pro. So this is definitely a relevant test for videographers and photographers, but it's just one of the many, many use cases. Early benchmark shows that this M1 chip actually beats the 2020 MacBook Pro 16 inch, which is my everyday machine, in terms of raw CPU score. Now to me, this is just absolutely insane. We're comparing a fanless entry level MacBook Air to a top of the line professional oriented 16 inch MacBook Pro that were released less than a year apart. The new MacBook Air has 6 more hours battery life than the previous model, free of charge. <laughs> Smart one Apple. Now if you've used a MacBook Air before, you would know that its battery life is already amazing to begin with. Usually a real life use case would be a mix of heavy and light load and won't reach Apple's claim of 18 hours. But a 50% improvement on a first gen product? is still awesome to see. So you may ask. What do all these mean to videographers, photographers, and other creatives out there? This one's simple. More power translates to more productivity, quicker workflow, and shorter turnaround time for clients. Pretty much any creatives out there can benefit from the power improvement, regardless of the application you're using. Longer battery life is especially useful if your work requires a lot of traveling. It means you can work off-site and unplugged for longer, or simply procrastinating on your couch more before going back to work at your desk. There are also some additional benefits, including machine learning, which is supposedly 15 times faster, and allows Final Cut Pro to run intelligent framing, not to mention support for iOS applications. This will open a new door for a more integrated workflow. These are features that I haven't been using, but will definitely look deeper into in the future. Now I do have some concerns and caveats, namely current app optimization and hardware. All of the current macOS applications are designed for x86, not for the M1. Programs like Adobe Creative Cloud, including Premiere and Photoshop, won't be optimized until at least early 2021. I'm sure the adoption rate for optimization will go up very quickly though, considering how big the Apple ecosystem is now and how big this market is for developers. My second concern is about the hardware. All of the new M1 Macs only have two USB-C ports, which to some extent is a downgrade for sure. The previous generation Mac Mini has four USB-C ports for example, compared to just two now. And as a power user, all four ports on my MacBook are often used up. When Apple releases the Pro machines like the new 16-inch MacBook Pro and the desktop Macs, this will most certainly be addressed. I mean, who would want a 16-inch MacBook Pro with just two USB-C ports? Nah. Hmm, actually, who knows. Apple makes some crazy decisions sometimes, like keeping the 720p webcam in 2020. Hey remember, this is just the beginning. I cannot wait to see what Apple will come up with with the new 16-inch and desktop Macs. 
with the M1X or M2 or whatever Apple is going to call their next Mac chip. Thank you so much for watching my video. Remember to like, subscribe, and stay safe. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>